Hi, I'm Jesse McCready. I'm with Animodule. Check out my modules on animodule.com. Today, we're going to forge a lathe tool bit out of a piece of drill rod with simple stuff you have around the house, like a block, a couple of bricks, torch, hammer, something to beat on. Star. Heat it up until it's on. Yellow. Record. Oh, don't record me saying record. All right, we're getting there. We're getting, getting warm. Do you see it turning cherry red? Get it up orange, yellow. It's using a map torch here. Good enough to get us started. Let's get on over to the anvil. Yep. All right, we got a nice glowing hot. Now bend it over a little bit. Now flatten it out. Give her another heat. You don't need an anvil, you just need something to beat on. You don't want to beat on a concrete floor, you just set up a bunch of blocks if, you, if that's all you got. Still on top. And we'll heat it up one, more one or two more times. Yeah, that looks nice. I know I swing like a girl. So. And there, uh, are we in the shot? There you have it. There's a forged boring bar. We'll grind it out, we'll heat treat it. See how it works on a lathe. All right, now we get the rough shape in, and we'll grind some more on the profile before we finally heat treat it, quench it, take it over to the uh, bench grinder. All right, now I could spend all day drawing it out, 
using up all my gas, but at a certain point, it's just more economical to spend a little time grinding it. Exactly. We already got the basic profile here. We just grind this out and uh, clear at the bottom a little bit. Alright, you take some material off of the uh, off the back and off the bottom so it can fit in your bore and we're getting there. Whoa. Heat treat this and cut it off and touch it up, hone it up, cut something on a lathe with it. Alright, now I got a basic profile and we heat treat it. Heat it up with the torch. Kind of tough to see in this light. Is it, uh, is it magnetic? It's slightly magnetic, so I gotta keep on going. I'm about, what is it, 50 degrees higher than its Austin Kiddick temperature. Being non magnetic. But it's getting there. Uh, people judge by color, I can't seem to judge by color properly. I gotta, I gotta use a magnet test. I, it's still sticking a little bit. Keep her going. There you go. Starting to see some color there. important part is that we get the the tip heat treated there we go no magnetism put it in there move it around I just got some old used motor oil here mmm smells good smells good and it's not smoking when I pull it out not smoking when I pull it out there you go heat treated ready to go all right the oil cooled it down so I don't have to worry too much wipe it off with a rag just so I don't get it oil all over my file let's give it the file test there you go skates right off like glass That's good. and there you go now I take it over to the grinder put the edges on it and we'll cut on a lathe. Maybe I'll cut it off. Oh yeah, I uh, gotta temper it first. But we'll do that after we put the uh, put the angles and stuff oh, yes. on it. Very cool. So I got it cut. I took it to the grinder. Sharpen up the edges. Ground away the bottom and some of this far edge. So. She has room to maneuver inside the bore. All that's left is to temper it yep. in my little tempering toaster oven. Temper it at 350. It'll leave it hard, but give it a little more resilience. And then she's ready to cut. Yep. All right. Instead of using the tried and true 30 year old toaster oven, I'm just going to try it with my torch. We're not making any production equipment here. So, I'm going to heat it up with just a light straw and then quench it because it'll keep on heating until I get it into that oil. So, I heat it low and bring it on up. A little windy out here 
day. There's a little blue on there, all right. Give it the quench, move it around. And can you see me in the camera? Grab a nice clean rag. Oh, look at that color on there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's right on. You heat it to a blue or purple, it gets a little softer. So that's going to be real hard. It's going to have a little resilience. It got darker than I wanted on the shank, but that is not critical. Hopefully, that's what I wonder, honestly, is the, uh, if the shank is soft, does it flex more? Like, I've used mild steel for a boring bar. It has a tendency to flex a bit, but it may also be in my, uh, compound rest. But anyway, so there you go. Here's how to forge a boring bar. Let's put her in a lathe and see how she does. And here we go. I touched her up on the stone. It's nice and shiny. Nice and sharp. Let's, uh, Give her a cut. So my uh, my camera stand busted in between this and the last one. So there we go. Oh, turn it the wrong way. And there she goes. That is a thing of beauty. I'm Jesse McCready. I'm with Animodule. Check out my modules at animodule.com. And that is how you f quickly forge your own boring bar. There's no waiting for shipping. No, nothing. Just got a little help from my neighbor Patrick, who happened to be walking by and stopped in to see what all the hubbub was about. This is nice. You got a little moral support there. So, uh, next up, let's see if the sawzall blade, hacksaw blade, works as cutoff blade. Oh, that's for another time now. Have a good one.